Hi, I'm Will. Welcome to this first in a series of videos on relational programming, which is a topic near and dear to my heart. So I thought it'd be appropriate to begin by looking at programs that evaluate to the list I love you. And this is based on a blog post by my friend and mentor, Matt Might. His post is trying to teach people who are using a programming language called Racket different ways to construct lists. So every single one of these Racket expressions evaluates to the list I love you. Okay, let's try one of these out. Here I'm running an interpreter for a language called Scheme, which is very similar to Racket. And it turns out these programs run the same in both languages. So quote, I love you, evaluates I love you, great. Let's try something a little more complicated. That list expression evaluates I love you. How about a cons expression? That evaluates I love you. And we can find more complicated expression down here, a let expression. Okay, so all those expressions evaluate to I love you. We have 99 of these expressions. That's terrific, and if we're trying to learn about list manipulations in this language, that's great. What if we were tasked with generating the 99 programs that evaluate to I love you? Or 999 programs? Or 99,999? At some point, that might get old. Well, maybe there's a way of being able to give the value of the list that we want to produce and then have the computer generate programs that evaluate to that list for us. And that's an example of the sort of thing that relational programming is good at. So let me give you a demo. I'm going to load a file that contains uh, my relational program, which is called Avalo. And Avalo takes two arguments. It takes an expression and it takes the value that we want to produce. Now, if we wanted to run forward, we could feed in one of these programs, but that's kind of boring. So let's just cut to the chase and let's pick one of the answers that we want. In this case, the only answer we have is I love you. And let's generate an expression and scheme that evaluates so I love you. In order to do this, we have to have a little bit of an interface operator because we have to say how many answers we want. We want one answer, one expression that evaluates the list I love you. Let's try that. Now we get back a list of answers. The first answer and only answer that we asked for is quote I love you. Sure enough, that evaluates so I love you. Let's ask for a second answer. Okay, we have the old first answer. Second answer, list of quote I, quote love, quote you. Sure enough, that works. Okay, let's go for 99 answers. Great. So here's an answer. Cons of car, quote, I love you, list of no arguments, and that works. We have some other answers that look maybe kind of unusual, like here's one. And if I try running that, it doesn't work. That's because this answer actually has two parts. The first part, which I'm pulling out right now, is the actual scheme expression. And if I evaluate that, it gives me back, I love you. If we look at this scheme expression, we can see it has these weird looking values, underscore zero and underscore one. If you're not familiar with scheme or rack, it may be all these values look weird, but these are particularly weird values. Underscore zero and underscore one are our rep representation in our relational programming system of any legal expression can go here. So this is actually more like a theorem that represents infinitely many possible expressions 
you can pick any legal thing you want for the underscore zero, fill it in, and it will still be I love you. So for example, I'll fill in five. Sure enough, I still get back I love you. Or I could fill in the list ABC. Sure enough, I get I love you. So this is a very general answer. And in order to interpret this answer correctly, we need some side conditions. And that's what the rest of that answer was about. These absento um, constraints are basically saying there's some certain values you can't put in here in the underscore zero or underscore one. If you put those values in, then the answer doesn't really make sense anymore. But any other value you pick, any other legal expression, I guarantee you that that, that Final expression will evaluate to the list I love you. So that's very cool. So we can generate 99 of those expressions. Let's see how long that takes. And in order to make the answer more readable, I'm going to take the length of the answers. We'll still generate all 99, um, but this is just an easier way to see what the timing is. And it took eight milliseconds on that run to generate the 99 answers. We can generate more answers. How about 999 answers? Okay, so that takes 174 milliseconds or 9,999. That one takes longer, so that takes 2.4 seconds. And we can keep doing this all day long. I've got a file that has a million of these programs on it. So this is kind of neat. We can Instead of taking an expression in a language like Scheme or Racket and then finding the value of the expression, we can go the other way. We can say we want the final value to be the list I love you, or I could say, for example, if I was a fan of Anchorman, I could say I love Lamp, right? And we can get 999 Scheme expressions that evaluate to I love lamp. Well, wow, it's taking a while to print. Okay, let's just grab the last one. We have some constraints that we're ignore for right the second. But sure enough, evaluates to I love lamp. This is just sort of a teaser of the sorts of things you can do in relational programming, which is all about running these programs backwards. That is, in other words, having a more general view of what it means to do programming or to have a procedure or a function or a method or any of these other types of notions that instead of saying that we have an expression that gives us a value, in relational programming, there's no distinction between the inputs and the outputs. We're perfectly fine saying that we want a specific value, give us programs that evaluate to that value, so forth. Uh, it's a very Simple change in our worldview, but it has profound implications. And it gives us a lot of flexibility. And it's very fun to program in. It's basically a giant puzzle, how to solve this. So that's what the series of videos is going to be on. And my next video is going to be a crash course on Scheme. So even if you don't know um, Lisp or Scheme or functional programming or programming at all, I'm hoping to make these videos self-contained to the extent that that's not an issue. You'll still be able to follow along and everything will make sense. So the next video will be on Scheme. I will see you then. Thanks.